apparently, for the first time in about 36 years, the new guy says he's not going to show the up new for guy. the new guy. White House <laughs> What's his name? correspondence dinner. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there have been several presidents who, who didn't make all of them, but never in their first year. Yeah. And, uh, the, you know, people bring up Reagan. Well, Reagan couldn't attend because he was recovering from being shot. Yeah. Uh, but he different. did call it. He did call it. He in. called it. Um, and so he said, so the new guy's saying, you know, I'm, I'm not going because they're so mean to me. And yeah, I just, you know. <laughs> well, you, can't, you can't go out and say that these are the enemy of the people and then play nicely with them. What happened to all those people? You're trying to tell them these are the enemy and now you're playing with them. So, so you think it's consistent? I mean, do you give, does he get points for that? At I think least? it's I mean, consistent uh, this, for this thing because he did okay in the Alfred Smith uh, thing. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, and once, where he embarrassed his wife. Well, he, yeah. he made a joke about Melania, but he actually looked like he had a little bit of a sense of humor. And then Comedy oh. Central roasted him once, and he, <laughs> he went with the, pummel, yeah. the pummeling then. So this time, it's like, well, I already said these are the enemy, so I have to be consistent. I don't think it's consistency driving it, though. I think it's thin-skinned fear of yeah. what will come down well, on it, him. Yeah, the only yeah. thing because thinner was, than his skin is his hair. Well, it's, <laughs> it's really what drove him to run for president, was yeah. that whole roast by President well, Obama. Which, which he started. Yes, yes, Remember. he did start. Yeah. But you but had a great idea. I think it would be really cool if Hillary Clinton came and spoke oh. instead. <laughs> because I think the real president. Well, it brings, wow. it brings back the idea that do you show up and mm -hmm. speak to an issue or do you protest and boycott? And I think when he opens up a space, another leader needs to come out because mm. that's what the event's about. And I think it'd be she really cool. I'd like, to see, I'd like to see Alec Baldwin come in his place. Yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, I think, I think Steve you know, Bannon should do it. No, will go. no, I do. I think the real president. I said, will I, feel like I think Steve yeah. Bannon should do it. Yeah. Maybe he could come. Oh, yeah. He's running the show behind the scenes. It's going to go from funny yeah, to like this pink face no, screaming. I'll just, tell you what I think would make the greatest impact if all the previous living presidents would show up oh. Bill Clinton, that Jimmy Carter, awesome. Herbert Walker Bush. A George Herbert Walker and George W. And President Bush Obama. Mm -hmm. and President Obama, of course. All of them should just show up and say, this is what America is. We respect the press. That would show that him would be, that's a what a suggestion. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> I call on you, presidents of America. Yeah. Right. So, the thing is, there's been animosity before. Like, you can look back. President Obama, we talked about this before, had made comments about Fox News being yeah. a problem. But this is beyond animosity because now you've grouped everyone together and you've mm -hmm. made the press yeah. in general. You haven't even singled out one person who maybe crossed the line, in your opinion, but you've made everyone the enemy. And that is a problem because you're the president of the free world, and without the press, it's not a free world. That's right. So, yeah. that's a real problem for everybody. And it's also a chance for when, when, when presidents go to these things, you get to know them as a person. Which they're help funny. Them, they're relatable. No. Maybe it would be helpful to them. The so there's right. laughter. Right. You already, listen, you already know who he is. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I know you, everybody tries to say, well, maybe, the, right. he showed you who he is. Right. But if he's looking to appeal. I was hoping he was appeal, saving the he's, best for last. He's, exactly. he's not looking to, he's not looking to appeal. He's not looking to appeal to people, He's looking to, people, to though, no, I mean, he's looking to say to his base, look at how they treat me. But well, yes. remember yes. what you did. You started it with Obama. Yeah. With eight years of you're not the real president. Deal with it, my friend. We'll be right back. So, okay. If you happen to. If you happen to go to bed early last night, you might have missed one of the honest moments in an uh, Oscar show that I can remember. But, but if you missed it, take a look. And the Academy Award. <laughs> for Best Picture. You're impossible. Come on. La La Land. Yeah. There's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. Moonlight, Best Picture. Guys, this is uh, very unfortunate what happened. Personally, I blame Steve Harvey for this. <laughs> that was funny. It was funny. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know, apparently Warren Beatty was handed the wrong envelope. Uh, 
<laughs> well, you know, Warren's looking at me thinking, did I sleep with Emma Stone or was it Sharon Stone? <laughs> was funny because originally when I saw it people were like oh he didn't know what to do so he was looking yeah. to her yeah. but when you think about if that really played out if I were handing it to Joy kind of be like yeah yeah like yeah. warning with my eyes yeah. and he doesn't do it, he goes like this <laughs> yep. Here you go. Yep. It's like you figure like, it out. Exactly. You figure it out. So I, I was wondering. I was like, oh my gosh, did he throw her under the bus, or you know, did he not want to take like, responsibility for, for it? But I just think it was just a, a big mix-up. Yeah. But what was funny to me was Steve Harvey tweeted out, "Call me Warren Beatty. I can help you get through this." <laughs> Hashtag the Oscar. <laughs> You know, I think when you watch something, you have this expectation that they're supposed to be superhuman. These things happen. Yeah. It's okay. You know, I was Actually, watching at home. This is not supposed to happen. Right. But, but <laughs> no, 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 no. Because it's never happened, it's never right? happened before. Yeah. And the reason it doesn't, it's not supposed to happen is because when you get those envelopes, mm -hmm. it goes in sequence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, this is the envelope for this. Right. This is the envelope for this. So somewhere, either... Her envelope, she put it down, maybe she, you know, maybe they, stone, somebody right? picked Emma it up stone, and thought yeah. it had fallen or something. Yeah, something. But it just, it just, it, it, that, because they, Price Waterhouse, and they're looking in to see, because they feel what this happens. is their mess up, mm -hmm. um, has prided themselves on the 80 years or 79 right. years of this, of saying, you know, there's only one card, one card per right. performer. Yeah. So it, it's a, it's kind of a, uh, a crazy mix-up, but that's the Academy Awards, it's live, and that's why you want somebody like Jimmy yeah. Kimmel, because oh, if you he, need to yeah. be live, you need yeah. somebody At who can it do it. It knocked Trump off the front page for a second. For a second. Yeah, yeah it's true. Um, say that Price Waterhouse Cooper um, did issue a statement on this mix-up. They say, we sincerely apologize to Moonlight, La La Land, Warren Beatty, Faye Dunaway, and Oscar viewers for the error that was made during the award announcement for Best Picture. The presenters had mistakenly been given the wrong category envelope and when discovered was immediately corrected. We are currently investigating, just as you said, Whoopi, mm -hmm. how this could have happened and deeply regret that this occurred. Yeah. See, when something yeah. like this happens to me, though, it's more important how you handle it. And I think the way they handled it was so professional yeah. and yeah. so well, nice and it just showed their humanity. Yeah, that's, well, but they're actors, you know. They, yeah, yeah. Well, they're people. Not everybody can do that, though. Well, a lot of well, people that, get really in depth. These, but that's why these guys are these guys. Well, I appreciate you them know. for because I don't know that I'd be able to, yeah. to handle no, that you, so well. You will learn. <laughs> so. yeah. But you might not be able to do it yet. Not but it's, yet. I can it's promise what you, what you not yet. It's some, but you learn how to do that because yeah. you're on live. You do it every day. Yeah. I would have held yeah. on yeah. a little tighter if they ripped it out of my hands. I think as an Oscar winner, were you just shocked when you heard about this? I was just surprised because you know I know that when they give you that envelope people hold on to those envelopes oh they keep so there's them. only supposed to be one oh. you see what I'm saying yeah. so, for so that this doesn't happen because can you imagine if a mix-up like this happened in the middle of the show Oh, and yeah. somebody got oh. the wrong, you know, yeah. so it's a, it, it's, oh, so it would be you know, announcing an Oscar yeah, that so wasn't maybe, even given out. Maybe yet. something, oh. uh, maybe there was a duplicate made and, you know, they're, they're not looking at these, they're just putting them in the envelopes, in the correct envelopes. So it oh. could have been a duplicate card, but, you know, it's, listen, it's a live show. I know. Yeah. Stuff yeah. happens, <laughs> and I, I know a lot of people were sort of freaking out because they thought it was going to be a political Oscar mm -hmm. show. And I have to say, I think... <laughs> Everybody at the Oscars said, oh, wait, this is about the movies and what we're doing. Forget yeah. about him. Yeah. <laughs> Forget yeah. about him. You know? Yeah. Here and there. Here and there a joke. Yeah. yeah, I mean, jokes you expect it from the host. Yeah. Right. But, you know, the artist, except for, of course, the, one of the artists who wasn't there, who should have been there, uh -huh. is the gentleman who uh, had been put yeah, out with director. the band. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, I mean, some of it was there. But, um, and a lot came from Jimmy uh, Kimmel, I'm told. A, a lot of the funny. Yeah. So, yeah. take a look. This broadcast is being watched live by millions of Americans and around the world in more than 225 countries that now hate us. I want to say thank you to President Trump. I mean, remember last year when it seemed like the Oscars were racist? <laughs> you know, we're more than two hours into the show and Donald Trump hasn't tweeted at us once. <laughs> and I'm starting to get worried about him.
That's cute. Because, I mean, was he watching? You would... You would oh, think sure he was, was watching, I'm right? Sure he probably he has 10 screens up and it's like CNN, yeah. you know. Like, what yeah. are they going to say about me? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because they didn't have anything to say about you. No. Yeah. Oh, but you know, we do have something to say about ESPN. Congratulations for their winning their very first Oscar for the documentary OJ yeah. Made in America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they won last night, which was wonderful. Yeah. And, but it, it started, yesterday started out on a quite a sad note mm. with the loss of Bill Paxton, oh, we were told that. Yes. He was complications uh, during a surgery, 61 years old, oh, you know. So young, and you knew it's, him. Yeah, I knew him, and I knew Judge Wapner. Oh, I mean, Judge, Judge Wapner passed away. You know, yeah. Judge Wapner, y'all. I know, people's I mean, court. He was people's court. We, we the people's court. I know. <laughs> and then uh, Game of Thrones star Neil Fingleton, who was only 36. 36 he was yeah. the tallest man in the UK. Uh, mm -hmm. Seven, 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 seven. seven. What did he die of? Uh, I think complications heart. from his yeah, heart. Yeah, his heart. Oh so it's God. just, it was, a, it was sad. A, a sad, but they're all such great folks that we got to know them, so yeah, we celebrate yeah. that. And today's Black History Month, FYI, honors a man born into slavery who rose up to become one of the foremost civil rights leaders and education pioneers in American history. Booker T. Washington founded Tuskegee Institute in 1881 and in 1901 became the first black man invited inside the White House. It wasn't his only visit. He was presidential advisor for Theodore Roosevelt <laughs> and William Taft, William Howard Taft, who sought his counsel on racial matters. <laughs> he actually got a person of color. <laughs> he was also the first black person uh, on a U.S. postage stamp. See, Booker T. Washington, uh, people did learn about in school. He's one of the people that yes. we've been talking about a lot of black uh, people for over the years who ha we don't even know who they are because we haven't gotten the right education. But I think Booker T. Washington, right? Yeah, that yeah. was yeah. one. Didn't, we yeah. all learned about yeah, him. That's and true. Frederick Douglass. Yes. Yeah. Some of us Except learned. Some of I'm us. still <laughs> learning about him. <laughs> Not everybody. <laughs> He's well, doing some good well, things. He, he, right. He's running for the Senate in Omaha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know how you're always bragging about you dated Abe Lincoln? Yeah, you, you dated Frederick <laughs> We'll be right back.